Hey, Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest Needless Unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel, brought to you by Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. Check it out the first Monday of every month, wherever you get your podcast. Today, we are taking a look at the elusive Red Ninja from, I guess, technically the second wave of the G.I. Joe classified line. Uh, this one has been a tough find. It is currently packed out at one per case, uh, to my understanding, which seems a little insane for a troop builder. But uh, if Hasbro has been anything about this classified series, insane is the word. I love this art on the side. Looks very cool, very serious, very menacing, uh, which I like because that's how I think of the Red Ninja. On the side, we can see that their specialties are boots, knives, Kicks and throwing stars, or perhaps snowflakes. Uh, I'm just kidding, obviously. Please go to gijoe.com to decipher what all of those symbols mean and what the Red Ninja's specialty is. On the back of the box, you can see the encouragement to troop build these guys right here on the art. This is the same box art we've been looking at from the beginning. I love it, I think it's beautiful. Uh, I'm excited to see more of this come into plastic fruition. Uh, so anyway, I I've mentioned before on these videos that I'm a huge fan of this packaging. I love this window. I love how it wraps around the side and covers up these icons. Uh, this is number eight in the series. And you can see Red Ninja right there. Uh, no file card, no bio on the box. But again, if you go to gijoe.com, you can find a file card, biography, whatever for this character. So that's cool. Uh, aligned with Cobra. And we just need to open this up and take a look at it and see what kind of great figure we're getting. Uh, unfortunately, my trusty 1964 box cutter is out of service at the moment. So I'm gonna use my trusty old man finger to pull that tape off right there. Open this flap up, dispose of this pointless piece of paper and get this figure out of the box so we can see what we're dealing with. Uh, there's a lot here that's new and there's a lot here that's familiar and we'll talk about that as we go through. Uh, we have seen if you have the limited edition zero figure snake eyes, then you've seen all of these weapons before because they were included with the weapons rack that came with him. And finally, a couple of Psy, a couple of gigantic Psy. It's interesting, depending on what franchise you're looking at, whether it's Ninja Turtles or uh, Marvel or G.I. Joe, it seems like the, the Psy are the weapon that can sort of differ in size the most while still for all intents and purposes being the same thing. Uh, let's take a look at this figure first of all. Uh, you can hear a review of the video game G.I. Joe Operation Blackout on the latest episode of Audible Interlude. And while this character is not in the game, this is very familiar, this sort of uh, textured loincloth type piece. And I'm wondering if this is gonna be reused for a standard Storm Shadow because in the game, he has this sort of piece on the character. Uh, and if you don't know, the characters in the game, the character models are based directly on the classified series figures. Uh, we've got some extra pieces here that are used to differentiate this, use this buck over and over again and put some different pieces on it. I like that. Uh, up here we have a sort of demonic mask, which I think looks cool. I don't know about this headband. I mean, look, look don't get me wrong. This figure looks Awesome. I think this is a very, very cool action figure. But when I think Red Ninja, uh, I honestly think more like what the Marvel Legends Hand Ninja that's coming out soon looks like. There's almost a little too much to this guy. But, I mean, really, that's not a bad thing. I'm complaining about an action figure being too detailed and having too many parts. That's insane. Uh, look at the white eyes there. Interesting that they went with that as though these guys are possessed or something. I don't know. But 
it's a cool, intimidating look. And I, I don't dislike it. I just need to see what the background of this particular iteration of the Red Ninja is. Because if there's one thing that G.I. Joe does over the years, it's evolve and change and uh, survive with the times and become what it needs to be. And I love it for that. Uh, you can see here some kind of funky uh, sort of throwing stars. I love the paint on this piece right here. It's not just solid red. There are a lot of paint apps here. Uh, we have sort of a, a uh, pattern. It almost looks like a, a reptile skin pattern, which is an odd choice because I thought it was a chain mail, uh, but it's not. If you can see there, it really is more of a leathery reptilian look uh, on that and on these hanging pieces here. Very interesting, because like I said, I would have assumed that was more of a chain mail. And, and in the game, I believe Storm Shadows is, but uh, he moves quickly, like a ninja, so there's not a lot of opportunity to just sit and stare. Uh, I love uh, these sort of armor pieces. Not a big fan of these pegs peeking through. Uh, this is probably one of my biggest pet peeves on modern action figures, is when the pegs are not matching the surrounding material. Uh, drives me a little crazy. As you can see on the inside, they're okay, but that outside is just not great. I also find it interesting that we've got a red strap here, but then these straps are just the same color as the garment. It's kind of odd. I'm not sure what's going on there. I feel like these should be red like the plate, but then here it almost looks like this plate is a different piece, and maybe there's another piece of padding that is the same color of the garment under that. I'm thinking too much here. Uh, overall, really cool. Uh, light armor, so the movement, you know, he's going to be able to move like a ninja. And of course, we've got the ratcheting double-jointed knees. Uh, one thing I've really liked about the Classified series is that I haven't run across any frozen stuck joints yet. You can see right here, we've got the nice pivot there as well as that uh, pivot, the, the pretty much ideal ankle. The only problem is when this is a ratcheting joint and it situates in a spot that doesn't have the figure standing, which seems to happen a lot of the time. If you can see uh, when it's when these are set to where the ratchets are, they angle downward just a little bit, and that's you can't have the figure stand like that. So you kind of have to force it into a different position. So I, I like ratcheting joints, but more often than not, they seem to cause problems with where they ratchet. Uh, that abdominal joint, uh, I took a little flack in an earlier video for not complaining about the looseness of the ab abdominal joint, but here's why it doesn't bother me because I can still get this figure to stand however I want. Yeah, sure, it would be nice if this didn't wobble around like that, but it's not preventing me from achieving any of the poses that I want this figure to achieve, so I don't have a problem with it. Uh, very cool. Let's take a look at the accessories now. You've got, well, you know, before we even get to the accessories, Let's take a look at this belt again, because I did overlook all the slots here for the weapons to go. And he comes with tons of weapons. I'm going to be actually very impressed if all of these weapons can be stored on this guy. That is going to... That's like worth a full point. I know I don't rank these or rate these, rather. Uh, but if I did a figure where every accessory that is included can be stored on the figure for me, is like worth a full point. If I was doing it out of five, that would that would bump it up one point. Uh, so we get this uh, sword with the wacky long handle. No paint on these, which is disappointing. But we do have the look of it. Uh, the blade is a bit shinier than the hilt. So that's something, I guess. But man, the lack of paint on these later figures is really bugging me especially with as nice as the accessories looked with, like, Duke. Uh, we've got this little bladed deal here. We've got two of those. Uh, we've got two of the seemingly, to me, oversized size, but uh, maybe not. I don't know. How big should a size be? Let me know in the comments. Uh, and then we've got sort of a throwing 
like climbing axe type thing. And I like this loop at the bottom because in my mind, you could take both of these and sort of string them together. And maybe this guy uses them kind of like nunchucks, which seems horribly dangerous. Uh, and, and I would not attempt it, but I am not a ninja of, of any color, red or otherwise. So let's see. Oh, and then we've got uh, one more sword. Fairly distinctive look. I like it. Uh, it's, it's cool, but, you know, wouldn't it be nice if the wrapping here was red? Uh, the, the, these just flat black accessories are a letdown. I'm not going to lie. All right, so now let's take a look and see how many of these accessories we can pack on to our Red Ninja. First, we're going to plug in our uh, sheath back here, our multi-part sheath. And you can see we've got one for a blade and uh, two for a more circular item. Same deal on the belt. Two more circular items and one blade. So let's see what we can get going on here now. In my mind, the longer hilt would go there, but that seems really awkward. So we're going to take that one and stick it right there, which doesn't totally seem to work. There we go. Just jam it down in there. No problem. Uh, the Psy, just because I'm a big Ninja Turtles fan and Raphael keeps his Psy, Psy, Psy's size and his belt these are going in the belt which is going to make them completely impossible to remove from under that back piece but that's okay because we're not looking for actual functional practicality here we are looking for a guy that can actually keep all of his weapons on his person at all times all right we're going to get this other sword here which all right, look, let's talk about this one too. And this is something where you can leave your thoughts in the comments if you like. I'm not a fan when toy companies cheap out on the sheaths because you don't just leave these blades sticking out like this. This is crazy. You guys, spend an extra hundredth of a cent and extend that sheath all the way down so these guys will actually have their blades you know, covered up when they're not using them. I, I, I hate it when toy companies do this. It's ridiculous. Even if you can store all of the weapons, which is nice, they really do need to be actually stored safely and uh, not where if you're running, you can cut your buddy's leg off or whatever. So those slide right into there. It might actually be smarter to put the psi up here and then hang these from those loops right there. So they're hanging down, but uh, I'm not going to do that right now because you guys are already getting tired of me talking about this Red Ninja. I can feel it through the YouTube verse. So we've just got one more, one more step here. And look at that. Gaining him a full extra point in the Needless Things <laughs> action figure rating system. He can hold all of his accessories on his person. Pretty fantastic, even if this looks absolutely ludicrous sticking out over his shoulder like that. I wonder if it would be any better to put it in the other way. Probably not. No, because then he's going to look up and cut his ear off or something. Uh, so no, no matter what you do, these swords are a little silly. But the figure is very, very cool. And now that I've got him in hand, now that I've finally managed to find one, i got to say I want more. And also some of those hand ninjas. Thanks for watching, you guys. Please like, subscribe, share this video, and stay tuned for more G.I. Joe and other toy reviews.